Hello friends, welcome to this uh, session, Introduction to Generative AI. This is session number 3 in the series, the complete course, comprehensive course on Generative AI and Prompt Engineering. First session was Introduction to, to, uh, introduction to AI, Artificial Intelligence. Second session was Introduction to Machine Learning. And this is third session where I am going to introduce the Generative AI to you. So the course is Generative AI and Prompt Engineering. Let's start. My name is Ram. What is Generative AI? Uh, it is uh, like if you look at the subset, Artificial Intelligence is the umbrella under which we have a subset called Machine Learning. Deep Learning is a subset of uh, Machine Learning and Generative AI is a subset of Deep Learning. So, Generative AI by definition is a set of AI methodologies that can create content that resembles the training data that models were exposed to. It's a type of uh, AI that can create new content. It's a subset of deep learning where the models are trained to generate the output on their own based on the prompt. It's a model that can create a wide range of output like images, music, speech and text and now the, even the videos. So, generative AI is machine learning that can produce content such as audio, text, images, code and other type of data like uh, videos and uh, other type of data. How does generative AI work? The generative AI concept is it learned the underlying patterns. It is a very complex process, the learning process of the model. Learn the underlying pattern, this appears simple but the complex uh, process uh, in given data set and then use that knowledge to create new data that share those patterns. So, for example, to make it easy to understand, let us understand we have a lot of uh, uh, images of dogs, various type of uh, dogs we have, various breeds of dogs and uh, let us assume that this is the training data. The model objective of the model is to figure out common dog pattern and features and the model will learn from this training data set. Once the model is trained on this data set with uh, various categories and uh, breeds of dogs and model is trained then we can ask the model to draw a picture of a dog and model will draw a picture of a dog based on its acquired knowledge. That is what the generative AI is all about. Very simple language to understand, simple concept and this is how you can think of generative AI, how generative AI works. Generative AI and other approaches like the machine learning approach, what is the difference between the two? In previous approach, the, uh, what we discussed in session 2, the previous lecture, we talked about the machine learning where the data and labels are used by the machine learning model, the predictive machine learning model and the output was generated based on the learned knowledge or acquired knowledge which is used for classification, recommendation system and game playing. However, uh, generative AI works in a different way where we have the model which is generative AI model which has learned uh, from the vast data set and uh, we send a prompt or input to the model and the model generate output or the new output which means we can use it for uh, image synthesis, text generation and music composition. Type of generative AI machine learning models, there are various types what we will discuss broadly two which are most common nowadays. One is image based models uh, where uh, which generate the visual content, they learn from large collection of images. And second is a text based where the model generate textual content it learn from the large collection of text data. Broadly those two categories but there are more like video generation models also. Generative adversarial network GAN. Look at this uh, image, you think that it is a painting. Generative uh, adversarial network generate realistic images that resembles training data. They create high quality images and original artwork. Imagine you have a bunch of cat images and you want a machine learning model to create similar images of different cats. That is precisely uh, what GAN does. This particular painting is created by generative AI model or a GAN model and uh, this is available here. It was sold on 43 or 42 billion dollars. Simple image created using the GAN model 
and sold at 42 43 billion dollars imagine how this gans work in the gans or generative adversarial networks we have a generator the generator takes in random numbers of as input and generate the images of interest we call it as forger then we have discriminator which takes both the image from the generator and the real images from the data and then spot the difference between them, them. We call it as detective. Both the generator and discriminator are trained together. Over the duration of the training, the generator gets better at creating images which looks real and the discriminator gets better in detecting fakes. So the objective of adversarial is these two networks are pitted against each other where the generator creates more realistic synthetic images to fool the discriminator whereas the discriminator learns faster and better strategies to describe or to detect fakes. So this back and forth strategy forces both the network to improve until the generator can create highly realistic images and the <coughs> which are indistinguishable from the real images. Diffusion model work by adding noise to the image in the training data by forward diffusion process and then reversing the process to recover the original image using reverse diffusion. These models can be trained on large unlabeled data set in an unsupervised manner. Imagine we have an image of a cat and then we use uh, this uh, forward diffusion process the image of a dog uh, or cat is converted to uh, noise. With this noise along with the existing images and the text prompt and the other options other features and the descriptions we start generating the real images which is matching the description or the prompt and the existing images and the description of the image so that is called reverse diffusion process so reverse diffusion process will recover the image based on exact your requirement or the prompt this is called reverse diffusion process. So, diffusion model works on this uh, concept like forward diffusion and reverse diffusion. Generative AI real world use cases in terms of visual representation, they are used for image generation, video generation, and design. We can use them for language also, like generate content or create new content, code generation, and conversational artificial intelligence. We can also use this for drug discovery, uh, for new molecular structure and then music, for example, synthetic uh, music generation or new music synthesis. Discriminative and generative models. There are two categories of models here, one is a generative model and second is discriminative models. The aspect purpose of generative model is to model data distribution whereas the, the discriminative model models conditional probability of labels given data. Use cases generative models are used for data generation denoising unsupervised learning. The discriminative model are used for classification supervised machine learning tasks. Common examples are variational autoencoders VAEs and GANs for generative models and discriminative models are reg logistic regression support vector machine and deep neural networks. Training focus generative model maximizes the likelihood of uh, observed data and capture the data structure whereas discriminative model learn decision boundary differentiate between the classes. Example task for generative model image generation impending for example GANs and VAAs. Discriminative models like text classification, object detection, for example, deep neural networks. Then mechanics of uh, generative AI, the important terms and phrases we use in generative AI. The first important term is the generative models. Generative models can generate new instances based on what they have learned, for example, variational autoencoders, GANs and uh, recurrent neural networks. Training data, the quality of training data directly impacts the performance of the generated output. The loss function, it is a mathematical function that measures the difference between the generated output and the desired target. Optimization algorithms, adjust the parameters of the generative model to minimize the loss function during training. Evaluation matrix, 
metrics such as perplexity for language models or inception score for image generation tasks and hyperparameters and tuning that is the setting that controls the behavior of the learning process. And then finally, we have regularization techniques. These techniques help prevent overfitting by adding constraints to the model parameters or architectures during the training. For example, dropout, weight decay and learning stopping, early stopping. Data augmentation, this involves generating additional training data from existing instances by applying transformation such as rotation, scaling, flipping, etc. These are some of the important terms and uh, concept we use in mechanic uh, in, in generative AI. So, we call them as mechanics of generative AI and that is all for this session. Thank you very much for watching.